going on everyone welcome to a brand new ranking so back in 2009 disney had this kind of revival age where after a couple of films that didn't really hit with the box office or the critics they started making some films that maybe a lot of people are going to hit and really all these films have been certified fresh on the rotten tomatoes meter so i thought it'd be fun because a lot of you guys have been wondering what is my ranking of this so i actually dug down deep went and rewatched a lot of these films and i actually have a more different ranking than i thought i think a lot of people are going to be curious about so Let's get into that ranking, guys. Of course, let me know your ranking down below as well on these films. I'm curious to hear all nine because we got nine films to talk about. So, without further ado, let's get into this ranking. Coming down at all the way at number nine is actually going to be Moana. This is a film that I've only seen three times, third time being the last couple of days, and I like Moana. I think Moana's fun. I think there's some great musical numbers. I think You're Welcome is actually one of the best Disney songs, like top 20 of all time. And I think a lot of it is elevated because of Dwayne Johnson, but not just because of Dwayne Johnson, but because of the main character that we have in here. I think Moana is a very fascinating character with a fascinating world that is built upon it. But one of the things about Moana is it never draws me back to come and watch it. Maybe it's just me personally, but I just never dragged back. I think it's a fantastic film. Really, every film on this list is fantastic, but it's one of those movies where I do think some of the songs, the main song in here is perhaps overplayed a bit, and they use it a lot through the film, and I wish they would have made some other songs for the movie, but the animation's gorgeous. I mean, you can say that about any of these films. You're Welcome, again, one of my favorite songs in the whole Disney universe, and it's a fun film. Like, you're gonna smile, you're gonna have some fun with it, and I think he he's a little cute chicken too. I mean, down at number eight is gonna be Frozen. Now, a lot of people say this film's overrated, and I'm, I've been said that, I probably said that before too, but I don't think it's overrated. I think this is a really good movie. I think Frozen's a really good movie. I think people think it's overrated because, well, it's blasted in everyone's head. It's made tons of money. It's still in the pop culture events of today, and we're finally getting a second Frozen movie next year. So that's where I kind of go to far as say, um, yeah, it's Frozen. The music is everywhere. Kids love this movie. And I think, again, I think it's overrated because I've watched this film probably over 300 times. Every time I've ever babysat someone or happened to have gone to my friend's house and they have a little sister, Frozen is playing. And it's just been engraved into my head to the point where I don't ever want to watch this film again. Definitely not a bad movie. I think Frozen is a really good movie, but it's a film that I just don't care to ever watch again. I've seen it so many times, and I will acknowledge it is a good movie with some good songs in it. And I think it has a really smart story about sisterhood and everything within there. Even though I don't love all the elements of the story, Olaf's cute as hell. Let's keep it there. But coming in at number seven is probably the most underrated film on this whole list, and that is Winnie the Pooh. This film that came out in 2011, the fact that it just bombarded, no one saw this film. It's very rare when you talk to someone, they're like, oh, there's a new Winnie the Pooh movie? You don't mean Christopher Robin that came out this year? No, there was a Winnie the Pooh movie that came out a couple years back, and it is excellent. Yes, it's nothing new. It's just a couple adventures with Winnie the Pooh and his friends, but it's so so heartwarming and so charming it's one of the best films in this disney revival era and in disney culture too i would go as far as to say this is probably the best winnie the pooh film it's adorable it's sweet it's heartwarming and it's just everything you wanted and more from winnie the pooh adventure if you have never seen this film do search it out and go find it coming down at number six is gonna be wreck it ralph now wreck it ralph is one of those films that again i think a lot of these films are underrated i think a lot of people don't talk about these films enough but wreck it ralph just has such a good story of kind of not not judging a book by its cover and teaching kids this but not even going in a sense the world the way that they built up this arcade and the way that these video game characters interact are wonderful i love wreck it ralph for that i think the animation is great i think it's beautiful and i was surprised not to have gotten it up higher on my list but after re-watching a lot of the films it kind of ends up at number six again you got john c Riley voicing ralph is perfect vanellope is adorable and the whole universe of sugar rush is great the villain in here is actually very intriguing and in what he's doing within the arcade and i just really enjoy this film this is a film that i love coming back to every here and there and just really getting enveloped into this universe and the whole universe as a whole and number five is actually the brand new wreck it ralph ralph breaks the internet that just came out this past weekend and i really like this film i think this film is enjoyable adorable and amazing it, it's so cute and i think it is better than the original to be honest just by a slight hair and i think a lot of that does go to 
it's furthering the world and also furthering the relationship and the character arcs between Ralph and Vanellope. And I think it actually delves deeper into their story. And upon thinking about it more, you get to learn more about them. Their brother and sister relationship that they have just exceeds and goes a little bit further. And they also have a friendship too that does go into other places. And I think this film has some of the strongest messages in any of the Disney films of the past couple of years for younger audiences and even for adults because adults can learn stuff from these films, right? Right? Ralph 2 explores the internet. It goes into the world where, again, this could have easily turned into a Moji movie. When I saw the trailers, I wasn't super impressed with these trailers. I was laughing, but I was like very kind of iffy on that part. But it succeeded in those elements and worked. Even though not all the internet stuff worked out, some of the viral elements was a little bit lacking, I thought. A little bit timely and dated, but still, it worked for what it was going for. I love the world, that MMO world they go into, the Shanks world. Um... I love going into this whole world that they go into, developing, going into eBay, Twitter, it's talking about the viruses, the dark web. It really was a smart, genuine sequel that it just left me wanting more within this Wreck-It Ralph world. And number four is going to be Big Hero 6. I love Big Hero 6. One of it being Baymax. How can I provide you with exceptional service today? I love Baymax. I think he's adorable. I think he's cute. And he just works in the whole thing. Now, I know Marvel fans freak out because it's not what Baymax looks like in the comics. But the thing about this movie is, one, the visuals are absolutely stunning and absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the best looking films that I think Disney or even Pixar have put out together. And I know this isn't a Pixar film, they didn't work on it together, but I think the animation here is excellent, bar none, some of the best animation. But just the team and the way that Hero and Baymax start to become one another and that the way that his relationship enveloped with this and having to go along with it after losing his brother is very sad, but it works. And I thought the film just carried a lot of great messages about loss and love that, you know, even though Disney films do have a lot of death in them, especially with parents, Hero 6 tackles it with a sibling. And I think it works more in that way and how to deal with it and the way of grieving. And I love what they did with it. I, I think Big Hero 6 is fantastic. It, it's wonderful and it's one of the best. As we're getting up to my top three, and my number three is going to be Zootopia. This is a film that I absolutely freaking adore. I love walking back into this film, going back to it, running to this film, and going into this world of the animal kingdom. And how is Disney World's Animal Kingdom not had a Zootopia thing in it yet? Seriously, like, this world just grieves and breathes and yells at the top of the mountain to make a theme park out of this place. But it's not because that. That's not why it's my number three. My number three is because I find this to be the most adult-oriented Disney film in this era. Because a lot of the humor is towards adults. I laugh. I smile. I, I just love how the different elements that they do and the subtle messages they put in there about race, about minorities, about drugs and everything. And Zootopia is just a bustling world with tons of messages about. And it's kind of an allegory about our world. And I love that about Zootopia. I think it's one of the smartest, most clever films Disney has put out. Coming in at my number two, that's going to be Tangled. I love Tangled. I think Tangled's adorable. Again, this is one of the best animated films. It's just everything with the lantern scene, which is God beautiful, but also with her hair and the way that they animate it. Because I'm a big animation freak. Between my two favorite genres, it's horror and animated. Weird that those are both my favorites. They're tied for the best. One's for kids, one's for adults. You know how that goes. But I think Tangled is one of those films that it's a princess story, but not just a princess story. And I think a lot of I love this film because of Flynn Rider. Um, one, it's Zachary Levi, and he's one of the most underrated actors. He's going to be playing Shazam. But I love the way that he portrays Flynn Rider. And I feel like this is one of those films that even kids and boys or girls can really adapt to this film because it has two main protagonists. And both of them work so likably and that you really believe in the relationship and the way they bond and the way that it goes in that route. I, I really like this. This is one of the first princess stories where I feel like their relationship mattered and it actually, you saw it unfold onto the screen. That's why Tangled is my number two. But my number one Disney revival era is Princess and the Frog. I think, I, you know, earlier I said Winnie the Pooh is one of the most underrated films on this list, but I think Princess and the Frog is the most underrated princess film and one of the most underrated films in Disney's lineup. They do not give this film enough credit. 
I think one of the reasons it's kind of high up on my list is because it is 2D animation. I love hand-drawn animation. It's stunning. It's beautiful, and I want more of it. That's why I'm so excited about the next Mary Poppins because they are bringing that back, and maybe we'll get some credit out of there, and people will want that back, and maybe we'll get more in this Disney rival era. Maybe not, but I just found Princess and the Frog to be so beautiful with its animation, but the reason I really like this is for two other reasons. One, the fact that this film has a lot of surprises to it and it doesn't just follow that cliche route it has a really beautiful touching world that i would have loved to revisit in either like a show or a spin-off vod movie i know i know the disney vod's aren't the best but this is one of those worlds that i would have loved to delve back into i think tiana is one of the most beautiful princesses she's one of the heart most hard-working princesses but i also love this because it's new orleans and the best music throughout all the disney movies it's bustling streets it just gives you the feeling of new orleans and again it's one of those films that you keep on guessing it never gets predictable for me and i just really love princess and the frog like it is literally the most underrated disney film and that's why also why it's my number one favorite in the disney revival era guys tell me where you guys thoughts are on this list I mean, you guys might hate it but we're all Disney fans here, so let's be nice and polite and talk about it down below in the comments. Make sure to leave your ranking, guys. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this list. I'm curious to read your guys' list, comment back, and have a great discussion with you guys. If you're new here, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Plus, hit up Sandwich on Films also down below, because right down there, you guys can get into advanced movie screens. You can check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. But guys, of course, until next time, stay classy. <laughs>